pleasant good morning on Works 96.7 WORX. It is time for Coach's Corner, live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. We do this every Saturday morning. Of course, we didn't do it last Saturday because uh, last Saturday we had uh, Madison Regatta coverage of the Indiana Governor's Cup down on the Ohio River. So, unfortunately, uh, we were unable to do it last week. But we are back in the seat today. And Jordan Bear sitting in for Tim Torrance as he is taking care of other duties. And I am joined by the Executive Director of the Lide White Boys and Girls Club, Mr. Ray Black. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Jordan. How are you doing, sir? Great. It's a great day. Beautiful day. Uh, kind of hard to believe we're wrapping up a couple busy weeks here in Madison and a lot of people out in the mount. It is. It's 4-H uh, Fair Week. has been real busy. You had Regatta the week before. So uh, a lot of activities here, you know, kind of... Uh, blows that theory that there's nothing to do in Madison away when you have as many <laughs> activities as, as we have here in town. Well, and, and there really is, because even, you know, Regatta Fair, and then in a couple of weeks we'll have Riverfest, and we'll have, you know, Swiss Wine just down the road, then we'll have Chautauqua. There's anything, a yeah, lot of stuff going on. Yeah, and, and lots of things going on for our youth. Uh, we've got uh, our fall ball basketball coming up, uh, fishing tournament, which we're already f filled uh, we had 30 spots every year, and that's already filled up. And, you know, golf scramble coming up. And, uh, it, you know, they start school pretty soon. So we'll be uh, back in school, and kids will be coming in about 300, 350 kids a day be coming into the Light White Boys and Girls Club. So uh, we've got plenty of things to do. Well, and that's good because one thing when you and I talk on the air, a big important thing to do is to make sure we give, especially young kids, the youth, something to do. We don't want them just sitting around not doing anything. That's right. You know, we've had uh, several teen nights uh, throughout the summer. Uh, not attended quite as well as we would hope, uh, but uh, we have been offering it. And then uh, just the other night they had a girls' night where they did uh, – fingernails, toenails, painted them up. Uh, uh, I, I kind of opted out of that one. Oh, like, yeah, you man. Know, yeah. Maybe braiding hair. <laughs> or I have no hair to braid. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they did try to talk me into letting me letting them paint my fingernails but i i kind of opted out of that <laughs> well understandably so i mean I, I mean i haven't painted my fingernails in a long time so um but so there's so much uh going on of course t-ball is kind of wrapping up over the summer how's that going well we're, we're in the game phase right now so that's been real good we just wrapped up a basketball toby kerrigan basketball camp last week mm -hmm. uh that was excellent as always and uh you know, just lots of things have been going on all summer long. We had four different sports camps this summer. Um, we had one for football. We had one for uh, volleyball, one for wrestling, and uh, just finished up the basketball. All the coaches did outstanding uh, job for us. It's always great when you get uh, quality coaches in to run those camps. So we were uh, extremely lucky to have the coaches we had come in and do those. So Coach Bentz, Coach Morrison, Coach Dow, uh, uh, Coach Napier and Coach Kerrigan and uh, Coach Scudder came in for the week and was here. So uh, a great week uh, and a great summer so far of sports camps. You know, again, you know, sports camps are something that are so important because, again, it's fundamentals. It's how when you learn at this age and then when you get up into the varsity and, you know, possibly into college, that's what's going to make your game that much better because if you don't know the you don't know the fundamentals, you're not going to do anything. You can't ride a bike without using training wheels first. And that leads right into our fall ball basketball league. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer it for kindergarten or pre-k actually pre-k through sixth grade and uh it's boys and girls and it's to work on their basketball skills so that when the basketball season actually gets underway they have some of the skills in place and can be practicing those uh the entire fall season uh even when they're not at our camp or our fall ball basketball leagues, they can be practicing those outside of the uh, time that they're with us and developing their skills and their fundamentals so that when they get on the uh, basketball court, there's fewer turnovers. Uh, they're able to handle the ball rather than it kicking away, uh, able to uh, not have to double dribble all the time. Uh, and, you know, I think people forget about the importance of being fundamentally sound. And uh, every coach I know is when I was coaching at uh, high school wrestling, I wanted my guys to be fundamentally sound. And the way you get good at that is working on the basics on a daily basis and doing it correctly. 
every day. If you practice it the wrong way, it doesn't do you any good to practice. Exactly. And, you know, one thing that you always say, especially when like when you look at a sport like baseball, a lot of people older, they're like, well, we don't want to hit off a tee. Yeah, if you go watch warm-ups at a major league game, uh, prior to the game, they're hitting off a tee. That's exactly right. They're hitting off tees. They're uh, uh, working on the basics. They're getting down in good position. Uh, they're bending at the, you know, squatting instead of bending at the waist. They're getting in good defensive, what I call a good defensive position, which you need for every sport. You need it for basketball, wrestling, football, baseball, soccer, every one of your sports that you can name. Uh, they're going to need that uh, basic uh, defensive position and, and train the muscles to be able to stay in that position, the longer you can stay in that position, then the better defense you can play, play or the better uh, able to field the ball or whatever. Ray, I want to go back. We mentioned fall basketball. Obviously, fall sports, there's a lot going on. Soccer has become so huge in our area. Uh, Brian Sackle, even for over at JCSA, the numbers there keep growing and growing. Then, of course, football. We have flag football and tackle football. How are the numbers for fall basketball? Is it tough sometimes to get those when there's so many other things going on? Well, uh, we've been holding pretty good numbers. Uh, you know, we're, we're probably looking at about 70 kids doing that. So, uh, uh the participation you can do more than one thing at a, in a season mm -hmm. uh, cross training is a great way to become better and stronger even at the sport that you're doing at that time so uh, time wise if, if the parents can swing it uh, it's, it's good to take and do more than one I know uh, my grandkids are in two sometimes three different activities at the same time uh, they could be wrestling playing basketball and playing uh uh, soccer. So uh, those three sports. Uh, lots of times uh, now the, during Al wrestling season, they, he only may be going once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the basketball may be twice a week because it's preseason. That and soccer could be uh, three times a week. But uh, uh, being able to cross train is, is a good thing. It, it really helps the athlete, and you're using different sets of muscles. You're not getting burned out on one activity because all you're doing is one activity. Well, and you see that a lot of times in college. When people go to college and they're focused just on one sport, you, a lot of times you'll see them quit after a year or two because they're just like, it just wasn't fun anymore. Yeah. They're just like, after you play for so long, they're just tired of it. Yep. So try to try to keep it light and try to keep it fun and, and uh, keep doing it. Um, so, again, that's fall ball. That's coming up. When does that start exactly? Uh, we have the applications available at the club. Uh, we'll put them online this week. Uh, once school starts, we'll actually deliver them to all the area schools. Um, but uh, it will start and run September 4th through October 11th. So that is it's a six-week season. They'll do two weeks of uh, um, just working on drills. Then they'll start one-on-one -on -one games, two-on-two -two games, three-on-three, -three, and then four-on-four, -four, and eventually five-on-five. -five. So. Uh, it's a kind of a building process, and we try to get uh, all the kids. So it, by the time they, they're done, they're ready to move into winter basketball leagues. All right, so be aware of that. Again, when school starts up, those applications will become available. Um, want to look ahead to school. Uh, school's just around the corner. Um, hard to believe we're already talking about that. I know if my mother's listening right now, she's probably right ready to throw something because I think she's enjoying her summer a little bit. But... Um, for those kids that are going back to school, after school care is still going to be offered for It, it is, and it's crucial that children uh, are not home alone and that they're uh, in supervised environments and uh, protected. And uh, I, I know some people think once a child turns 10 or 11 uh, that they're old enough to be at home. But, I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong. Uh, somebody could be electrocuted, uh, you know, especially with water in the in the house, and uh, um, someone could break in. Yes, I mean, yeah, somebody could break in, and and with the uh, drug issues uh, that are going on in our community, that's a strong possibility. Uh, just uh, keeping our children safe is is paramount, uh, and it's imperative that uh, everybody's responsible and tries to keep children safe. Well, and the other, I think, really important thing is also, even if 
even if the fact, like, let's say they would do that and nothing would happen, it's also the fact I think it's important for them to be around kids their age because you want them to have a social life because kids that don't have a social life, those are the ones when as they get older, those are the ones that tend to have some mental health issues. Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and just learn to socialize, uh, get along with people. Uh, a lot of kids now just uh, keep their face on the uh, – uh, telephone screen or the video screen or TV screen. Uh, the exercise alone is worth it and uh, getting them outside. Uh, every day that we have good weather, those kids are going to be outside playing uh, basketball, kickball, dodgeball, uh, running around, burning up some of that energy so that when they do get home, uh, when it's bedtime, they're ready to go sleep. Exactly, and yeah, I, you know, when I, I'm obviously younger than you, but even when I was growing up, we didn't have all that. One thing my parents always did was they said, "Go outside, do this and that." I think we need to get back to that mentality of what, like, even for an hour, hour and a half a day, make them go outside, run, play tag, play basketball, something, because I think that helps the kids so much in the long run. Yeah, Boys and Girls Club have several programs that re- that relates to that. Uh, one of them is called our Triple Play, uh, doing those activities, exercise. Uh, they try to encourage kids to exercise uh, at least one hour. So that's, that's, that's crucial. And when you look at everything that kids are up to, I know one thing you and I have talked about a lot is the importance of asking for help if need be, especially because they're going to get to certain ages where they're going to face possibility of seeing drugs, facing depression with suicide going on in our area. It is important for kids to talk to someone if they are feeling upset and they feel like they're going to harm themselves in any way. Uh, that's exactly right. Last year we had, uh, at, at certain times, we had as many as 24 uh, paid individuals coming in part-time. Uh, and they were talking with the kids. They were tutoring the kids. They were mentoring the kids. They were coaching the kids. All those things, uh, additional opportunities for children to speak to an adult, uh, notify them if there's some type of problem uh, either going on at school or in their personal life at home. So uh, th- that's not counting uh, over almost 400 volunteers that we have every year helping us uh, put on all the 80 different uh, programs, special events, and activities that we have at the Light White Boys and Girls Club. Uh, when you got that many adults around, sometimes they see stuff that says, you know, hey, I'm a little worried about little Joy today. He's, he seems really depressed. Uh, would you go talk to him? And that gives us an opening to uh, an ID, a potential problem, and uh, try to get little Joy some help. And the thing is, you, you know, people might think, well, th- that, that might not do anything. Well, you doing that might end up saving a kid's life. Yeah, exactly. Or it, it, even if it just makes his day better. Mm-hmm. You know, when kids have good days, they feel good. They, they achieve more. Uh, they have a better attitude. Uh, all those things uh, go toward positivity. And uh, positivity always beats negative yes. the every day of the week. So uh, always try to be positive. Always try to encourage uh, and uh, especially r- around children. There was a great quote uh, when I was out in Utah a few years ago. We want, went and watched the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and they had a message that they sent out saying, you know, if you are down and out or if you're working at a restaurant, you never know what someone, what just smiling at someone can do. They gave an example of a guy who was having a bad day, and he had a waitress, and she was personable, smiling at him, and it made his day. It lifted him up. That's why I always encourage people, you need to be nice, kind, laugh with everyone, because just by you doing that, you never know whose day you can make better. That's exactly right. Just uh, try to have a smile on your face, uh, something positive to say, and and I really think it's crucial that we do that for our children. We've talked about, we've talked about the importance of kids being at the Boys and Girls Club, what it can do for them, Um, but there's a couple big events coming up. We've mentioned the the Chelsea Bassmasters Tournament, but there's also a golf scramble coming up. That's exactly right. Uh, I believe it's the 27th year for the Farmers uh, Bank of Milton uh, annual benefit golf scramble. Uh, That's going to be August 11th over at Sunrise Golf Course. So we're uh, hoping to have a great turnout for that. that would be the my last one as the executive director. So uh, uh, I haven't golfed in it for a number of years, but uh, my staff's going to make sure that I get to <laughs> go out and hack away, uh, dig up some turf. Uh, the the golf course may not be the same after the 11th. They may have to come in and reseed it. Uh, but uh, 
we're looking forward to that day, uh, trying to get uh, a good group coming in. Well, we especially like for our alums, uh, Boys and Girls Club alums, to come in and uh, just say hi and have a good day with their former uh, Boys and Girls Club members and uh, get a team together, come in and have a great time. We're going to uh, register at 9, tee times 10, and then we'll play uh, 18 holes and a shotgun scramble. And uh, it's always a lot of fun. So uh, those people that like to uh, golf, like to hack, like to be with friends, uh, just want to come out and support the Light White Boys and Girls Club, there's please some, do so. There's something about golf scrambles that are just so much fun. Like everyone has fun, even whether you win or lose. There's just something about golf scrambles that everyone just has a good time. Yeah. So uh, just look out for my uh, divots coming <laughs> at you. <laughs> All right, that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, two other things to talk about here on this break. Um, we, You mentioned a lot of times financial assistance is huge because there are sometimes families, even the kids are great, but they're, they're, they come from families that struggle financially. Can the club help out like with if they want to do certain things, can the club help them out there? We, we always do that. We always have, always will, as far as I know. Uh, we, we try to help any family in need, uh, especially children. Um, you know, th- this summer we have actually fed over 100 meals per day uh, to the children that come in at the club. That's a free lunch. Uh, it helps those kids. It's nutritional. It, it helps give them the strength to get through the day. We also give an after-school snack, which we do during the summer as well. Uh, but uh, that becomes really important when they get off the buses and can go right over and get a, get a free snack. Uh, that's really important for them to get to the, before they get home, give them enough energy, give them enough uh, substance. And, and all summer long, you know, we've been averaging over 500 meal lunches a, de- a week. Uh, at the club. You add that up over an uh, eight week period, that's a lot of meals. Uh, but we've also, when children, we know that they're having trouble getting fed at home on the weekends, we'll take them put food in a backpack and send that home so that they don't go hungry over the weekend. So uh, uh, that part we try to take and help out. Uh, here we are at McDonald's and, uh, you know, yesterday we had uh, pears and Half the kids didn't know what a pair was. Uh, I took a big bite of one, and and then they started taking biting, biting into theirs, and uh, it was kind of funny watching their expressions. Some of them liked it, some of them didn't. Uh, but hey, it was a good experience. You've been around for a long time. Is it bittersweet, kind of surreal that your last day is coming just around the corner? It is bittersweet. Uh, it's been a great time. Uh, uh, getting the opportunity to work with children uh, that's my passion I'm, I'm a child advocate and uh, when we hire people we always try to hire people that uh, are children uh, support children child advocates as well uh, the one thing I've always tried to do is make sure that when we, we make a hire at the club is that uh, they're going to keep our children uh, uh, physically safe emotionally safe and mentally safe and uh, I've been so blessed with the staff that I've had over the years but I especially want to mention uh, Carl Tyree's been with me for 32 years uh, Daniel Marchberry our custodian's been with me 30 years and uh, Brandy uh, Poling her and Carl were both boys and girls club kids uh, when they were children and uh, she's been with us over 18 years, and she's about to become the only the fifth executive director of the Light White Boys and Girls Club. She's the first female uh, to do so, and uh, I know she's going to do a fantastic job. Uh, I'm honored that she's following uh, me because I know that she'll take it to the next level. And uh, that's always what you want to do is you want to try to bring something up to a, a good level and then have the person that succeeds you uh, elevate it to an even higher level. So uh, I'm so honored that she's uh, going to be my replacement. Uh, it's going to be crucial for our board members to uh, b- take a very active part in uh, uh, raising funds, helping the club, uh, volunteering at different events. Uh, it's going to be crucial for uh, the growth and development of the Lodge White Boys and Girls Club. When you uh, look back on all your time at the Boys and Girls Club, what are some of your fondest memories you have? Well, uh, it's, it's always going to be uh, all the kids that have come through the club. Uh, they've touched my life more than I've touched theirs. Um, 
they they are the ones that uh, especially uh, uh, as some of them have come back this year here lately in the last few months stopped in at the club they're successful adults or uh, they're you know just uh, being a functioning adult is uh, half the battle and uh, when they come in and they're telling me about their children uh, telling me about uh, what's going on in their lives that's always great to hear so uh, uh, they have touched my life uh, a lot more than I've touched theirs. So uh, I thank them. I especially thank my wife, Vicki, uh, for allowing me uh, the freedom to do what I've done. Uh, I, I thank my children for sharing dad, uh, but they've gained a whole lot of brothers and sisters, literally thousands and thousands of brothers and sisters over the years. So Ramey, uh, Derek, and uh, Coco, uh, uh, special thanks to them as well. Definitely got a blessed family there, I can tell. Yep. And, you know, when you look ahead, what's your future? Uh, well, uh, I hope to uh, continue to help to work with children. Uh, I'm an assist counselor. I want to make sure that we're trying to help uh, people that uh, are depressed or struggling, uh, uh, thinking suicidal thoughts. We want to try to counsel them and get them out of those dark places. Uh, I want to continue to mentor and coach kids. Um, of course, uh, I'm coaching a third generation in my own family of wrestlers. Uh, I coached my brothers, uh, Robert and Rodney, then I coached my son, uh, Derek, and now I'm coaching uh, my grandson, Griggs. Uh, so I want to continue to coach as, as long as I can, uh, try to have an impact, uh, a positive impact on anybody and everybody I meet. So uh, uh, I am campaigning uh, for a, a, a position on the uh, Jefferson County Council. Uh, I'm not doing it a lot right now because I'm still working for the club, but sure. uh, after uh, August 15th, I'll take a campaign for that and start going door to door, uh, campaigning, uh, trying to make a difference in our uh, county government. Excellent. Well, Ray, uh, on a personal note, I want to thank you for uh, everything you've done for me. Obviously, last year, uh, through a really tough time, I was able to come in and you just sat down, you chatted with me. It meant a lot to me. I know you mean a lot to a lot of people. And uh, you, this community has been lucky to have you. We wouldn't be where we are without everything that you've done for our youth. And uh, my friend, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. And uh, I know you're going to do great things no matter what. And I know the club will be in good hands, too. That's right. So thank you very much. I greatly appreciate everything that WRX has done to help us, uh, Kentucky and the News. Uh, uh, everybody's been fantastic here. Uh, you know, it is really cool on a small community like Madison. Uh, how everybody supports everybody pitches in. 99% uh, are positive people here. Uh, that 1%, we got to get them for their uh, positive as well. Right. So uh, uh, just to uh, uh, everybody that uh, is, it's really a family, and, and family supports family. Uh, we help in time of need. Uh, we're always there. So make sure that we continue that uh, as we go forward. Excellent. Well, Ray Black, best of luck in retirement. You and I will chat one more time next month up in the studio. But until then, enjoy your time, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. That is Ray Black, Executive Director of the Lyde White Boys and Girls Club. Of course, again, he will be retiring uh, coming August 15th. Big thanks to Tyson Torrance back in studio. Also want to thank Tyson Torrance for all his help this week at the Jefferson County 4-H Fair as well. Uh, big thanks to everyone. Again, a big thanks to Ray Black for stepping in this morning. Here on Coach's Corner, we'll be back next week for another edition. Until then, keep it right here for the best variety of music on Works 96.7 WRX. Goodbye. Thank you.